Hey everyone, Fuseman coming at ya. And apologies for this video coming out a little late today, but we got a super exciting Unreal tutorial that Abdo's gonna leave. And this one's inspired by a tweet that went out probably a couple of months ago now, where it's basically, you have this nice little window, and on the other side of that window is basically a whole new world. And you can just lean in, and you're basically there. And I think it's a really cool mechanic that allows for seamless transitions and, and moving in VR, which I think is one of those problems that really needs to be solved. So this is basically what we're going to be building today. And this is the first part of two. This one is basically kind of building it up in a 2D world. And then the next part is going to be taking that and moving it into VR in the Unreal Engine. So I'm super excited to learn about this. And I hope you are too. So at this point, let's let Abdo take it away and welcome it's Abdo and today I'm gonna to be showing you something which I've been seeing around the internet for quite some time people showing uh, a portal system done inside Unreal Engine but no one wants to show how it's done until today because I'm gonna be showing you how it's done so in this demo window right here I have uh, there is this Sun Temple which is one of the levels in the Unreal Engine library you can see here a frame of a door which looks like it's kind of out of place but when I turn around you can see it's showing me a location which is different than the environment which is basically the portal system in the portal game from Valve if you ever played that so when I move around the visuals get updated from behind there is nothing it's showing only in the front and the visuals get updated as if the dimensions are correct, the view angles are correct, everything is set up nicely. When I go through it, obviously it's going to teleport me to the destination it's showing me. Again, if I look around, there is nothing on the back, but on the front, it's showing me the destination where I'm going to. If you can look at this, you will find that the only difference between the visuals on the portal and the destination is the contrast which changes based on where you are. That's because the global uh, post-process volumes are affecting the uh, contrast bias, which we're gonna change later uh, for your convenience if you want to not see any kind of jump. But without further ado, let's get started. I'm showing you how it's done. Create a new project based on the Sun Temple, let's call it you report or something create okay this is the level brand new without the portals inside of it I'm just gonna fly over to where the first portal was located and I'm gonna create a new folder down here let's call it portal BP or something I'm gonna create a blueprint class actor of type now in this case, the tutorial can branch in two ways. We can either build a blueprint interface that handles the teleportation, then we build only one blueprint class and keep duplicating that portal on the level or create a separate blueprint class for each portal, which is the approach I'm going to be doing. So open that blueprint, make sure you're in the viewport. I'm going to add a new component, a static mesh. and when I try to load a mesh, it's missing because the mesh, I want to load the frame, happens to be in the starter content. I'll just copy it from the previous project. Just go to content, start content over here, copy it, just going to copy it to my current project. Once that copied, now I'm just going to open it again, try to load a mesh called frame, a door frame, and we're going to load this mesh, which looks nice, something we don't have to leave Unreal Engine to create. Let's rename this frame and add another static mesh, let's call it portal mesh. I'm going to load another mesh into it, it's called plane, which also happens to be a mesh in the starter content. Let me rotate this around 90 degrees and 180 degrees over this angle. Just position it roughly in the center. Just gonna switch to the right. And 
then try to scale it. Actually, I remember. You can change the scale snapping on from this menu if you want smaller snapping and you want to scale it manually. And just add another component, a, a most important component, the scene capture component, uh, 2D one of course. I'm just going to name it uh, Portal View. And then the last one, it's not necessary, but I'm just going to add an arrow, which will help us in the placement of the portal. Make sure that the, our portal faces in the right way we want. And that's it. I'm just going to compile and save, close this. I'm going to duplicate the portal, Control W. It's going to duplicate another portal and name it for me. And if I drag the portal, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Let's go the other place and place the second portal. Drag, rotate as, uh, as well, 90 degrees. Make sure it's facing the right way. Fly back. And let me just grab the player start to get it closer to the second portal. Just so that we don't have to travel every time. Let me place the portal closer to the wall and the player starts a little bit closer as well. And one thing you want to make sure if, if you're doing this for your own project is that the capsule surrounding the player start must be fitting inside the door frame if you're using this particular door frame. And if you want to edit that capsule and make it a little bit thinner, let's go to uh, the blueprint. There is a, this first person blueprint. Just edit the scale on capsule component. Make sure you have that selected and just adjust the scale. Okay, since it's working in my case, I'm not going to do that. And now we're going to start with the teleportation component of this tutorial so that when we step through one portal, it's going to teleport us to the second. Open the level blueprint for that matter. Let's go ahead and delete this play cinematic event. Compile. Make sure you save everything in the blueprint folder that we created. And let's go and select portal 1, portal 2 in the hierarchy. And in the blueprint, right click and then choose create reference to selected actors and then add on actor begin overlap. That's going to create what we need for the teleportation component. Let me drag the portal one and the begin overlap associated with it. Drag the event, set an actor location component, and connect the other actor to the target, the other actor in this case being the pawn or the player. And I'm going to get the world location for Portal 2. Let's choose world location default scene route. You can choose any of the others, but this one tends to work best in this case. This is going to set up the, the second portal as the destination for the teleportation once we go through the first portal. But you will notice a problem. I can't go through the portal. Why? Because the plane is set up to block dynamics. And we can fix that by going through the blueprint. Say overlap only pawn. And do the same thing with the second portal as well. Overlap pawn only. Compile and save. And now once we try to go through it, it teleports us to the second portal like we want. Obviously, we can't teleport to the second, but you can see that the door frame is blocking, but the plane itself is not, which is what we want. Let's go ahead and open the level blueprint again. Well, one simple reasoning would be to do the same for the second portal, right? It's going to work. I'm just going to create another set actor location and make the right connections. Again, get word location for portal one, default scene route, connect that. Let's hit play. Now, Unreal Engine is smart and it's gonna tell us the error right away. 
As soon as I go through, there is an error that says infinite loop. That's obvious because it's going to keep teleporting back and forth between the two portals because the conditions are met in each time. And to prevent that, I'm going to add a condition. In this case, a branch, which is like an if statement. And then it has a condition. Let's promote that condition to a variable. Let's call it can teleport or something. You can call it whatever you want. So can teleport by default is set to be true. If it's true, we're going to teleport. If it's false, nothing happens. But to break the loop, I'm going to have to set it to false once it's set to true. That means before, right before it teleports, it sets the variable to false, which means it will allow us to teleport through the portal only once. That works, right? Except we don't want that. We want it to teleport again and again and again. Let's add a delay of about half a second. And then after the delay, we're going to set the variable to be true again. It's a Boolean variable. And it's basically going to introduce a delay each time we teleport. The delay will allow the player to get out of the overlapping zone, which would prevent the infinite loop from happening. We just have to copy everything from the first element. Shift select the second components. Control C, Control V, and make the appropriate connections. Connect over there. I hope there was another way to connect this faster. I don't know. Maybe there is. Try it out. If you go through, hey, it's working. The teleportation is working without any problems or any bugs. So there you have a very simple teleportation system which will work anytime. There are many ways to do this, but this is one of them. Let me show you how to comment to your uh, quote unquote code in Blueprints. Just select everything and say create a comment, portal to teleportation, then create another comment section, portal one TP. And that's how you comment your code in Blueprints. You're welcome. The next thing we're going to do is obviously the visuals. So right click materials and textures and render target. And if you remember the scene capture component we did before, this is where it's going to drop its um, whatever data it captures. Let's call this something obvious for one render target or something. Duplicate that. Obviously it's not going to rename it the way I want. So both of these are gonna act like the destination where the scene capture component from each portal is gonna show us whatever it's looking at. Open portal one, select the portal view and assign portal one render target. Let's save, do the same thing for the second portal. Assign it to the portal view, portal render target number two. And save that again. Select both render targets, right click, and then create material. Then double click in one of the materials. And to get rid of the highlight, we can see in the preview right here, we need to change this mode to unlit, which is going to turn dark. Just hold control while you're holding. It's going to allow you to change the connection. Shut it to emissive color. Do the same thing, emissive color and then change the mode to unlit and save. So we have the materials set up almost like we want them. Now in this case, you can just apply the different poles. We are on portal one in this case. I'm just going to apply portal R2, which means it's going to show me whatever portal two is looking at. Do the same thing for portal two. I'm going to assign portal one texture to it or a portal one render target material which means it's going to render whatever portal two is seeing it's flipped uh, we don't have to fix this for the method that we're eventually going to be doing but i'll just fix it change the rotation change the scale again do the same thing for portal one Rotate, change the scale accordingly, and save. 
Before I move forward, I'll edit the render target texture resolution to match the, the demo resolution. So I'll go to the render target, access the texture and change the resolution to 1920 by 1080. It happens to be the, like the resolution of this level when I, when I click the demo. You can change this to whatever output resolution you will be running your game or demo at. Mine is uh, the 69 or 1080. So it's looking distorted again, and that's fine, that's what we want. Let's go inside one of the materials. I'm gonna drag from the UVs and type in screen aligned UVs and make sure that's connected. So when I move, you can see the texture is moving with it. That's an indication that the texture is gonna be moving relative to the, to the viewer camera. Again, do the same thing for the second material and save and close. Let's hit play and see what's going on. You can already see something in the editor. We're getting close, but we're not quite there. It seems that the scene capture component is moving in parallel with the camera viewer. Now that's not exactly what we want. We need to add some relative motion. So let's go to the level blueprint again, and I'm just gonna copy portal one and portal two over here. Move them, we need those references. Just gonna get the world location from both portals. Make sure you select default scene root. And now that we have the locations of both poles, let's add some vector mathematics subtraction, vector minus vector. It's going to give us the difference between the two poles in the world. Let's add a, con a player controller and then get the camera manager for this player and then get the transform component of the viewer or the player camera. Now, the mathematics involved with this method is like the relative motion. And what we essentially need is get the world location and the world rotation Now that we have these both, the idea is to have some mathematics involved and then have the portal viewer from each portal, in this case the portal 2 because we're working on portal 1, we're going to have the portal view or the scene capture component to be updated in its location and rotation. So let's get with the set world location and select portal view. Um, that's going to allow us to set the location and rotation with the target being the portal view or the scene capture component. So this is like relative motion. We're going to have the difference between the two poles added through vector addition to the location of the camera. This is essentially going to take care of the camera angles and location and make that illusion that the portal has uh, that I showed you before the effect going to add an event tick, which essentially it's going to update each frame. So the location of the portal view is going to be updated in each frame. Don't forget to hook the rotation as well. And if we hit play, you're going to see the exact effect we're looking for. It has the depth perception, so it looks like the portal uh, or the, the status and, the, and those rocks looks actually there. If we get closer, they get closer. If we go back, they get farther. We want to do the same thing for the second portal as well. Let's go back to the blueprint again. Copy everything down. Remove the event tick. I'm just going to make sure everything happens after this first portion happens. I'm going to flip the two inputs for the vector subtraction. And then change the portal from portal 2 to portal 1. Of course, it's not going to connect. I'm going to have to delete that component. And if we connect it directly, it's going to get the wrong component, which is the default scene root. I'm just going to have to do it manually. Get portal view and connect that to target. 
compile and test it out. If we go to the first portal, obviously it's working. Now we go through, we teleport, and the visuals are correct for the second portal as well. Nothing from behind, but from the front, the depth perception is looking so realistic, looking very nice. The last thing we could be uh, facing is that jump in the visuals, which like I said in the beginning has to do with the post-process volumes. I'm just going to edit the global post-process volume by going to the auto exposure and just you want to end tick all of these and then just do the same post-process. Just going to remove the, the exposure bias it has set on and you're going to have an almost seamless transition between the two poles. So there you have it. It's the best method out there. It's like so linear. It's the performance hit is not so big, especially if you do the forward rendering instead of the deferred rendering. I'm just going to get back and make the post-process volume, set them back to default like they were. Now, as of right now, the way it's set up, it's unfortunately not going to work properly in VR, which is why I'm thinking of releasing a second part where we go through and discuss how to uh, possibly troubleshoot this problem in VR and uh, make it work. If you test it in VR right now, you're going to see a lot of flickering and also performance issues. Um, the performance issues are going to be easily fixed if you change the forward render. But the flickering has to have a different approach to fix it. But in the preview right now, you can see it's looking great. The visuals are great. There is a slight delay of about one frame. I don't know if you can notice it. If I look away, the, the frame has some delay in updating the camera. And that has to do with the, the way the blueprints are set up. Um, it's barely noticeable, but you can probably fix it if you change the shading. Maybe it will help with the performance. I haven't tried it out myself, but that's something you can try out. That would be all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, this should be the solution for the mysterious um, portal system that a lot of people wanted to figure out but couldn't. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's been Abdo, over and out.